Hi, hello and welcome to another episode from China Teacher Brand where I share with you what it is like to live and work in China. As you guys all know, um, I am not teaching anymore or not teaching too much. So I wanted to get you up to speed to the things that I'm doing these days to kind of like stay afloat and, and go with the flow now that we have this new situation here in China in 2020. So one of the things that I'm doing is I have thrown myself full into uh, making video uh, content so both for this channel China teacher brand as of course China channel uh, the podcast that I'm doing with my friend Ziv and um, well uh, some uh, commercial opportunities have actually um, come up out of the blue some people have seen some of the work that I've done for my electric car and they want to uh, they want me to make some videos for them um, some of the interesting things that have come out of this is they like some of my, my, my wacky ideas for, for commercials, short commercials, and uh, they are giving me freedom to, to make them, produce them, and, and uh, then we're gonna, I mean, basically they want to see one or two of these very short clips, 10, 15 second clips, and from there we're gonna determine whether, well, we can co cooperate any further. So I'm excited about those opportunities and that, that possibility, so I'm, I'm giving it, um, all I've got so this is also one of the reasons why I haven't been posting too much um, is one of the reasons why I'm carrying all my gear out there at the back and why I'm, I'm making well this content out of my phone because really I don't have time to set up all this gear and stuff and make videos for YouTube um, for China teacher channel with all that gear uh, let alone just sit down and edit it and whatnot and well the quality for for the content that I'm putting out uh, out of my Huawei Mate 30 is fine so yeah I'm, I'm very excited about uh, those things so let me tell you a little bit what is coming up on uh, of course China very soon uh, last Monday we shot a video with a guy called John Harper John Harper um, came under my radar basically when Serpent ZA made a video about uh, his situation. He's basically an Australian guy who's been living in China for many 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 years almost as long as I have been living here and he's now stuck in China. Well when Winston was uh, living here, Serpent ZA was living here in China, um, he made a video about his situation uh, and uh, well I don't know like a year and a half or two years later um, we are making a um, follow-up video on him and his situation so yeah keep an eye on that because there's a couple of updates uh, on that situation now I would have to say something really important and I think that this is something that a lot of people appreciate about my content is when I get something wrong I will correct it I will fix it for example when Winston made that video about John Harper um, I was confusing him with uh, one of his brothers. There's six brothers. One of his brothers lives here in Dongguan. And well, basically, um, I heard things and um, I went on uh, Sir Pence's channel and said like, look, perhaps you guys don't know uh, this. Now, the truth of the matter is that it was me who was wrong because they're two completely different people. Um, so, yeah. What I plan to do when I find a minute is I want to go to the video on Serpenza and delete my comment because it is just the proper thing to do, the right thing to do. I need to correct myself. I was confusing two people and, and, and that's my bad. Um, so this guy's story is extremely, extremely interesting and puts into perspective a lot of what people say about the justice system in China. And you'll not hear it from my mouth, you'll hear it from John's mouth. So yeah. Keep an eye on for that podcast that's going to be coming really, really soon. We're thinking um, uh, it's, it's very vital because his case is going to be decided next week. So we probably are going to do something about our timeline to make it a little bit more relevant. Now, talking about all the things that I'm doing and, well, a very important day today. This is what I'm doing today. I'm going to be shooting a podcast for OCC, of course, China. Um, with the general consul of uh, Israel, uh, Ziv, who's a very well connected, connected guy, uh, my partner, he um, he got in touch with him, and he's coming to Dongguan to do some kind of uh, meeting or or event, 
and he's agreed to give us three hours of his time to shoot our podcast. So again, <laughs> carrying all the gear, setting up all the gear, uh, whatever, where, where they're going to meet, which I don't want to disclose right here. Uh, although perhaps that's public knowledge, I don't know, but I'd rather not say that. <clears throat> and um, well, yeah, I mean, this channel, of course, China, is starting to take off and and uh, reach some really, really cool level, um, being able to interview people of that caliber. Of course, um, I'm not the most knowledgeable person about uh, the whole Israeli situation or the Middle East situation. I know very, very broad strokes, so I've been trying to um, update myself and, and learn a little bit about um, what's going on these days uh, over there so that I can ask some insightful questions and, and interesting questions for you guys to learn. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited with, well, uh, you know, when it rains lemons, you learn to make lemonade, right? So since I'm not teaching, I'm really jumping on this video content and video production and really excited about this. Um, yesterday we interviewed a very, very interesting character. Actually, um, I introduced uh, this person to my partner and um, he was like, mm, okay, if you say this person's interesting. And we had the whole, the whole interview and he was blown away by how interesting this girl is. A very young girl, 26 years old, Chinese, worldly as you can imagine. She's absolutely amazing. Um, so much drive is so representative of um, the Chinese of the future the people who know the world understand the world uh, and um, and are destined to be the future of the country so that's another podcast that you guys need to keep an eye open for for I don't know because we got quite a bit of content but in a couple of weeks uh, she'll be out uh, with that content. So yeah, a very short video to let you guys know how things are going with me. I'm still teaching a couple of lessons. I'm tutoring basically. There are some kids that go to an international school, but they're struggling a little bit with their, their homework and whatnot. So I've been hired by their, pa by their parents as two kids to help them with the homework. So it's also interesting to see all the material that a lot of these schools are using to work online. So um, we're using something called, come on people, uh, we're using called uh, Class Dojo. Okay, let me just pass this guy. Something called Class Dojo, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, I have no idea how much it would cost to implement something like that, but that would be kind of cool to have for my school whenever I reopen, if I ever reopen, because the control is really, really cool. Uh, if anybody uses a uh, class dojo out there, let me know what you think of it and um, whether the implementation for a uh, physical uh, brick and mortar uh, English training center would be advisable depending on what you think. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm also doing a couple of online lessons. There's some kid that wants to take some tests, um, the TOEFL test. So I'm starting that as well. Some kids that's doing some English oral competition so I'm also uh, helping him with his pronunciation so all in all I think I'm working about what 15 I'm working about 17 18 hours a week uh, but the one thing that has taken a huge hit is the income the income level is really really low <laughs> because well people don't pay the same for online lessons as they would um, physical lessons and uh, the kids that I'm tutoring because they're taking 15 hours a week of course you have to give them like a preferential rate because otherwise it will be basically unaffordable so um, rather get some money in the pocket than to have nothing so yeah that's that's where I am right now but really really hoping that in the next few months mm, things are going to change and I will be able to um, dedicate more and more of my time to making content, making video, and, and creating um, products, commercial products out of video. And perhaps if time and money allow it, uh, getting to better gear. <laughs> I'm really eyeing out that uh, Canon C300 Mark III, which is not coming too high 
at nine thousand dollars but yeah my wife would kill me if i do that right now uh, trying to save as much as possible because well we don't know how long this is gonna last so come on green light and uh, well guys I'm, I'm about to park where i'm going to teach my students so um yeah i just wanted to keep you up to date to the things that i'm doing and uh once more guys thank you so much for all the support and all the new subscribers that are signing and and um well coming to see what i've got to share with you guys in terms of my life in china life in china and china as i see it until i see you again guys take it easy bye for now Oi.